If you want to train Rover and break some of those bad habits, we got an expert here in the studio who's going to be more than happy to help you out with that. And some entertainment news coming your way as well on Fox 4 Rising. If you think Nicole Richie is going to jail to meet with her buddy Paris, yeah, think again. Why Nicole might not be bunking with her B-Fry. You're watching Southwest Florida's morning news source. News with Amy Sedlacher, Amy Wegman, Sky One Mother with Jeff Robbins, and on the road feature reports with Bill Wood. This is Fox 4 News Rising. Well, speaking of the dog days of summer, maybe you have a problem pooch that you'd like to turn into a pooch princess. Well, Patrick Logue is here and he can help you with just that. That's right. Or maybe a prince if your dog is more of the prince nature. And <laughs> Patrick is with Bark Busters and you work on training dogs in their home, in their own environment, to really get them used to any sort of situation and you don't use choke collars or anything dangerous like that. We don't use pain nor bribery. <laughs> um, the reality is that dogs have their own way of communicating with each other that doesn't involve pain or bribery. Uh, they use body language, voice tones. And so that's the system that we've adopted. Uh, just by studying dogs and in 18 years of business, um, that's how dogs communicate. They use their body language and their voice tones to get across what it is that they want. Um, the conflicting thing is a lot of times, if people are reprimanding their dog and they're not exactly sure of what they're saying, their body language often says one thing and their voice tone says another. And that's, very, that's often when it's very confusing for the dogs. Right. Can you give us an example of like what our body language may be telling the dog? Like if, say, we get down on their level, what are we saying? Well, in terms of getting down on their level, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, particularly for playing and, and having some fun and all that. But oftentimes we might see people with smaller dogs pick up a dog if it's barking. And really what that gesture indicates to the dog is that it's literally being elevated in status in the pack. And that is a sign of dominance the taller that you are. There's a reason why kings and queens sit on thrones. So anytime a dog is elevated in status, it's only going to kind of feed into their canine ego. Right. Um, another common thing that we often see is uh, people with smaller dogs or dogs that are barking. Owners will often bend over right. and wave their finger in front of their dog and say, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Jake's um, like, what did I do? Like, I do <laughs> You're so but good. the reality is, is that the well, just as getting bigger is a sign of dominance, when we lower ourselves, that's a sign of submission. And the high-pitched voice tone is a very pleasing sound to a dog. It's, it's a praising voice tone. Right. So we're telling the dog orally from English to stop barking, but our sign of submission with our body and our voice tone is telling the dog to keep on barking. Right, right, right. So you're suggesting maybe stick... I've seen you before with Jake, even when you want to get him to pay attention or, or lay down, you stick your chest out and you use a very firm voice. That's correct. The, the word that we use, the, the secret word, is a very low guttural tone, ah. It's not said like that, it sounds like this. Ah. And that's designed to emulate a dog's growl because dogs growl at each other. Right, right, and that's right. That's the way they talk. And Jake obviously is done of a very well. He's cool as a cucumber lying here on our set. And somebody might be like, okay, well, my dog is a hyper and it chases the mailman. And sure. So how long or how many sessions does it really take to work with each one of these dogs? Well, about uh, company-wide, um, again, over 350,000 dogs. Uh, company-wide, about 80% of the clients that we see, we only see once. Um, the initial lesson lasts between two to three hours. But just in case either the dog or, in all likelihood, the owners aren't quite picking up on everything, right. we offer a life of the dog guarantee. Wow, fabulous. Where, where we continue to come back out as many times as it takes to work with the owner and their dog. That's great. And if you have a problem dog that you want to uh, kind of train with Bark Busters, get in touch with Patrick by giving him a call at 239-225-1371. I know... Uh, it's really not 239-500-2275, right? 877-500-BARK. 877-500-BARK. There you go. Or you can email him at swfla at barkbusters.com. So definitely, thank you so much for coming in. And Jake, you are such a good puppy. Jake is awesome. And they'll be back in their 8 o'clock hour. Maybe we can get Patrick to show us a few secrets. A not few. give away too many. Yeah, too exactly. <laughs> Well, stick with us because you're an animal lover. We've got something for you because if your dog's not behaving quite right, we're going to help you out. That's right. Patrick Logue from Bark Busters is here this morning, and he's going to turn your problem pooch into a prince or princess pooch. That's coming up on Fox 4 Rising. 
Well, if your favorite friend is uh, sometimes a little too hyper, maybe too excited to see company, chases the mailman, choose your shoes, any of the above, we've got some solutions. That's right. Patrick Logue is here this morning. He's with Barkbusters, and he brought Jake along, and this is just an example of how <laughs> well-behaved your pooch can be. Because Jake actually came from a shelter. He was just a normal, hyperactive dog, right, like anyone else, and you helped him out. That's great. Absolutely. I, I was just going to comment, it's always good if that friend who's doing all those things uh -huh. is a dog. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's true. If it's a person, or, I can't or your, you Or your four-year-old, maybe. Or your four-year-old. <laughs> yes. um, but no, Jake came from uh, the Lee County uh, Humane Society um, on uh, Six Mile. They're now formally known as the Gulf Coast Humane Society. Right. And um, we originally got him as a box, uh, as a um, Boston Terrier mix. Well, <laughs> He kind of he kind of blew that out of the water. He's a little bloated this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and really, what we do is we work with the owners. We come to the owner's house and we work with them to establish good canine communication, which involves body language, uh, hand signals, and verbal guttural sounds and pra high praising voice tones. Uh, so that way, the dogs understand what it is that you're doing. I think the coolest thing is, though, that you guys don't hurt the dogs and you don't use bribery, as you'd like to call it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, I mean, treat training. Uh, treat training is uh, a very prevalent uh, way of to train your dogs. Um, but the problem with that is, is that oftentimes, um, if we need to give a dog a treat, we're literally showing signs of submission right. to the dog. And then, in addition to that, simply by the way dogs or wolves perceive food and who gives food to whom. Um, that just sends really conflicting signals to the dog. Um, the bottom line is that we happen to feel that, well, the owners of the house, the owners of the dog should be the leaders, and they should not be perceived as human food dispensers to the dog. Right, there you go. And if you don't have the treat handy with you and you're at the park or something, and that's what the dog's used to, yeah. then you're kind of stuck in the spot. You're very stuck, and this is why we do very much rely on verbal communication and hand signals. Now. Uh, having said that, hand signals don't work if you have a blind dog where your voice would come into play right. um, and vice versa. But we can still work with that. We've worked with deaf and blind dogs before Wow! Um, because once you figure out how a dog thinks, you can still work their system uh, to communicate with them effectively. Can you give us an example of something maybe people at home are, are having some problem and they're wondering what they could do? Make, give us an example of something you guys would do. Sure. Well, uh, um, oftentimes a common issue is people just want the dog to stay. Right. And maybe not charge at the front door. So if we kind of get Jake. Jake up and going here a little bit. <laughs> He's um, going to wake up. Basically, we just get Jake's attention <laughs> with a little, uh, and we ask him to sit Well, he's, this is my dog, so we've worked on him a little bit. Yeah, obviously Jake's a I'll little I'll crouch well down to be in the camera. <laughs> um, and what we would do is we'd simply tell him through some hand signals, okay, let's we would get in front of him and stay. And once we have that done, once we told him to stay, if he moves that stay, we would correct him. We would correct him with that voice tone that uh, we talked about earlier. Okay. okay. And again, that's our way of showing to, showing Jake, in this case, hey, we're growling at him. He's right. doing something we don't like if he decides to break that stay. Very important thing to understand is that stay means he stays. And so the word that we use to release him from the stay, because he's being a good right. boy, is the word free. Free. We don't ever want to free. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> we, don't, we don't ever want to call a dog come from a stay because stay means stay. Okay. We issue that release word and then we can tell the dog to come. Very, Very good, good tips. And if you want to get in touch with Bark Busters, maybe you have a problem pooch, give them a call 877-500-BARK or shoot them an email, swfla at barkbusters.com. Patrick and Jake, thank you so much for yes. joining us. Thank Very you. Very good much. job. Such a great little puppy.